I was just thinking about making a tasty hot beverage. So today, how about we talk about pouring liquids? Perfect timing. Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. So today we're gonna to talk about pouring liquids. Now, if you are someone that has recently lost your vision or you've gone blind at some point in your life, this can be very challenging. It can be very tough to just the simple task of pouring liquids into a cup. Uh, if you were born blind, you might still have problems with it, but most of you guys rock at being blind. I'm probably not going to tell you anything you don't already know. But hopefully today I will give you guys some tips, some tricks. There's a couple methods, uh, well-established methods, and then there's some tricks that I've picked up along the way. So let's get started. So the first technique is to just use contrast. And this works great if you're pouring things like coffee. Uh, or tea or hot chocolate. Doesn't work so well with water, <laughs> but those really dark colored liquids, it works great for those. Basically, you just want to have a container that is a opposite contrast of the liquid you're pouring into. So for example, I've got coffee here and I'm pouring it into a white mug so that contrast of the black coffee against the white mug is going to make it easier for myself with low vision to see. Now the next one is the finger method and this is the most common. People use it all the time. It works great. It works best with cool liquids. I don't recommend doing this with really hot liquids like coffee or tea. Boiling water definitely don't do this. You're gonna burn your little finger. <laughs> Very simple, you just place one finger into the mug and then as you pour, you wait to feel the liquid touch your finger. And this is a great method because you can gauge how full you want the container. Now, another word of warning, you might not wanna use this method if you're filling up someone else's drink. <laughs> they might not want your finger stuck down into their drink. You know, people are weird like that. Now the third method is to use the temperature of the liquid to your advantage. All you do is place your hand on the side of the container and as you fill it up, you can feel the change in temperature on the outside of the container. This is a very popular method. A lot of people like this. It works great with really hot liquids like boiling water or coffee. Once again, just be very careful, but Pour it very slowly and as it rises, you can get a really good indication of the level of the liquid just by the temperature on the outside of the glass. Now this last method brings a little modern technology into the picture. These are liquid level indicators. These are great little gadgets and they really take the guesswork out of filling up a cup or a glass. The way it works is there's two little wires that pop over here. It sits on the edge of a mug or a glass and the wires rest inside. As you fill up the cup, the liquid touches the two wires and completes a circuit, causing the device to play a sound. Some play music, some just have a very loud, annoying tone. <laughs> That's, it hurts my ears, but it definitely gets your attention. A very ingenious little device, how the liquid connects the circuit and causes the sound to come on. Whoever invented these things was pretty, pretty smart. Of course, I'll have a link over on my Amazon shop where you can find these. Next, a couple tips and tricks. Number one tip is to use a funnel to fill up your cup. These things are awesome. They come in very, very handy for filling up containers. By putting in a funnel, it makes the opening much wider. It's going to be much easier to hit. You can find these pretty cheap at most grocery stores, just a couple bucks. I got this set of three sizes here. Another trick is to always fill up your cups and glasses and things like that over the sink because spills are going to happen. That's just inevitable. We know it. So it's better to be over a sink and the spill just goes right into the sink than on top of your counter or all over the floor. 
Now say you just want to make one small cup of tea or hot chocolate, something like that. You don't need to boil a giant kettle of water. One easy option is to just fill this up to the right level that you want using one of the other methods, the finger method or a liquid level indicator, and then pop this into a microwave or pour it into the kettle and only boil up that small amount that you need. That way, when you pour that boiling liquid back in, you don't have to worry about using one of the methods to see how high the level gets because you've already measured it out. You can just pour it in and be confident that it's not gonna overflow. Finally, another great way to get really hot liquid easily and already at the perfect amount is to use a Keurig. You don't have to put one of the little K cups into it for it to work. You can just push the button without a K cup in and it will just spit out boiling hot water. On most Keurigs, you can choose one of three sizes, so it takes the guesswork out of trying to fill up your cup. Another tip for the Keurig, it works great for instant oatmeal. There you go, guys. Just a couple methods, tips, and tricks for pouring liquids and judging the level of liquids hot and cold. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all the videos coming out in the future. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my best to help out. Thanks again for watching, guys. This is Sam with The Blind Life. I'll see you next time. <laughs>